Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode five of the SDHQ podcast. I'm your host, Noah Kapeski, creator of Steam Deck HQ, here again with Kyle, also known as Cryobyte33 on YouTube. Kyle, how are you doing today? I'm pretty good. How about you? I'm exhausted. I, <laughs> I got more sleep recently because our daughter is staying with uh, her grandmother, my wife's mother, but we've just been like sleeping all day and it's made me more exhausted. So it doesn't feel like I've recovered at all. But overall, it's been it's been a good time. Been playing some awesome games. Lots to be excited about, though. You know, oh, what, yeah. what have you been up to recently, though? Uh, for me, mostly, I actually got a new job, so I haven't had much time to play games in the past few weeks. Uh, but I'm uh, finally uh, making a little bit of money again. So that's been helpful for me. Uh, the commute's, uh, commute is brutal, though, an hour and a half each way. Yeah. <laughs> I can't I can't imagine dedicating any more than maybe like one hour to commute to and from work combined one hour, but three hours. Like, <laughs> that's that's just brutal. Like, how early how early do you get up to make sure you can get there on time? Uh, about 6 a.m. And I don't get back until probably seven at like 7 p.m. by the end of the day. That's yeah. <laughs> that. I don't know if I could do that. Thank, thank God I work from home. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's all. That's I, I do all I two days do. a week. In all fairness, I work from home two days a week, but three days I have to okay. go into the office. Yeah. Well, at least you've got those two days. Are you are you pretty busy those two days usually? Yeah. Well, I mean, I still have things to do, and that's like uh, one of those days I end up using as my laundry day and everything. Um, got it. But. Hopefully, uh, in the next couple of weeks, I'll I'll start getting into the flow of things and get a little bit of time to play something. But I've been I've been out of it for a little bit now. Oh man, I hope so. Well, then this will kind of be like a welcome back into the world of gaming kind of yeah. <laughs> kind of episode too. Like, what have you we missed, missed in you. the last couple of weeks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's been a lot. There's been all these amazing like indie games that have come out this this month so far. We just reviewed one called Crow Country, or I reviewed it. I posted it yesterday. And oh man, if you if you enjoy like the original like survival horror games of like the PS1 era, like the original Resident Evils and Silent Hills, Crow Country is like perfect. It's basically got that same, I guess, the same base to it, but it modernizes it in some ways. So like you have a twin stick control scheme so you can move the camera while you're moving around and they still keep some of those older mechanics as well i think i feel like the aiming like when you're aiming your gun and shooting is much closer to like the originals versus um versus how it would be more modernized so if it, it still has that dna but it does feel like it has evolved while still retaining that dna yeah i'm looking at uh screenshots of it now and it, it looks really interesting it does look like it has the tank controls and everything as someone mm -hmm. who like i played uh resident evil 2 and 3 on pc back in the 90s and like this definitely gives me those vibes so maybe i'll have to pick this one up no i i recommend it you know it's it's a lot of fun and it's not it's not super long either i i would say you could probably beat it in like a couple of hours it could be like a one sit down kind of thing it's super i'm i'm starting to really enjoy those like i i don't get me wrong i do love games where you have to grind and put a little bit more in but i'm starting to really enjoy just being able to sit down and get through a game in like one or maybe two sittings. And it could be because like being a father now, it's like, I don't have as much time to just sit down and play for like three, three, four hours straight. But at least with like these smaller games, it feels like I make progress in the smaller time frames, And then I beat the game quicker. And it feels like because they're not trying to pad it out to make it super long, it feels like a more refined experience. Oh, yeah, for sure. I played, uh, what was it, a long hike, I think it was called, not so long ago. And that was a very, uh, that was a very nice, just one session game. And I, it was mm -hmm. the, the whole thing encapsulated in like four or five hours. And I was like, okay, that was nice. Yeah. I should do this more. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, I'm actually playing another game right now. I, I'm almost done with it. And I'm probably going to write the review for it after this episode uh, for this game called Indica or Indica. I think it's Indica. I've they she, they say her name constantly and I've completely forgot how to pronounce it. Um but it's it's an interesting game. I like the overall story, but it feels like there are some parts that they pad it out a little bit too much and make it feel like a walking simulator and it's 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 got like an interesting story, but there's just too many little things in there 
that padded out and it's not a long game either it's also like around four hours but they just put in these little parts where you have to walk super slowly while there's like a voiceover and because of that it feels like you know they added an extra like 15 minutes to a section just because they force you to walk instead of like being able to run so it's yeah. it's and then there's the oh, yeah. oh man the mini games oh <laughs> Hey, I don't mind. I, those are I don't mind those walking simulators. I like um, mm-hmm. like Dear Esther or uh, whatever. Uh, that oh, was a good a game. Good Stuff like the like I, I like the walking mm-hmm. simulators, but yeah, I can't do them like all in one sitting. There, that's more of an yeah. experiential thing. Yeah, that's fair. And you know, I the, I guess with the other walking simulators that I've played, like Dear Esther, I didn't really feel like it was padded. Like it, it felt like there yeah. was a reason to move slowly and kind of look at the scenery. It doesn't. It, I didn't yeah. get that same feeling with this game. Not saying it's not good. Like it is still an enjoyable story, and I do have. I I did enjoy a lot of moments of it. And the overarching story and the religious. You know, I guess what is it? The the religious overtones of the entire like, you know, narrative. You know, it is. It's interesting, and I like that kind of stuff. But it's just there's too much padding, and it I feel like it takes away from the overall experience. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to play it myself. I, I typically don't like mind that, but yeah, I'll, I'll have to figure out whether I agree or disagree with that. It look, I mean, like I'm looking at it, it looks good, like it looks pretty, mm-hmm. and I, I like the uh, feeling of it and um, yeah, the tone. But... No, it is. It's really cool. Like overall, like as a game, it's actually really cool. But it's just it, there's yeah. there's too many moments so far where I'm like, like I'm still interested in the entire story, but there's just too many moments where I feel like this is taking too long. Like, <laughs> please just get me to the next part. I need to, please. <laughs> gotcha. But it's a it's a it's a great story overall, and it is nice seeing someone who is kind of trying to make herself believe a specific thing or behave a certain way start to kind of figure out like who she is and like you know that it's okay to just kind of be yourself and feel the way that you feel you know yeah yeah so it's like she's like constantly moving against that like she's trying to force that part of her down and throughout the story she kind of starts to accept that you know this is just who she is there's nothing wrong with that you know, just part of life. Cool. But I'll go into that more about my review. You ready to go over some games that have some nice little updates for the Steam Deck? Yeah, let's go for it. All right. So I'll start out. I'll start out with this game called Project Heartbeat. So this was actually the first one we covered this week. And if you have played like Osu, which is this like rhythm game where you're tapping points on like your screen, it's easier with a touch screen, but you can use a mouse. Uh, this is this game is basically like that. It does have controller support, which is really nice. So playing it on the Steam Deck is a lot easier. Um, but with this new update, it was their biggest one called the Phoenix update. They updated the engine to Godot 4, which gave them more rendered options and increased performance, which allowed them to change their backgrounds to be actual 3D UI backgrounds, which... Uh, completely eliminated a ton of extra battery drain. So they're saving a lot of new battery with it. And they have native Vulkan support, which is Ooh. also very nice, especially if you're playing on Linux. Oh, yeah, especially. I mean, or with an AMD GPU. Like, AMD performs much better mm-hmm. on Vulkan than DirectX. So it's just... That's, that's free performance. There we go. So if you like rhythm games, get on it. Um... <laughs> Uh, the other one that actually just happened recently, uh, I think it was like two days ago maybe, is this game called Heading Out, which is a narrative-driven um, or a narrative-focused uh, roguelike. It's all about driving, so you're driving from one part of the country to the other. Uh, there's racing elements, there's the roguelike elements where you have to uh, pick certain decisions, which all have an overarching narrative to it, and it's a really cool game, and it runs pretty decently on the Steam Deck, but their newest update actually gets rid of all of the graphical settings so you cannot change any settings at all you're locked to the medium settings which they work if you're playing at 30 but 40 fps feels so much better and we recommended going a little bit lower than medium for that 
So now, you know, kind of have to play at 30. Um, you can use a launch option though. If you use a lot, if you go into the preferences for the game in the general tab, scroll down and type in steam deck equals zero and then parentheses command parentheses, you can trick the game into thinking that it's not on a steam deck and you'll be able to get the, uh, the launch options back quick, or the uh, graphical quick, settings back. Quick point, uh, not parentheses, percentage signs. I was close. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was, it started with a P so I got that. <laughs> it's it. It's a symbol with a P just try them all. <laughs> I was almost there. <laughs> no, it's fine, dude. Um, but yeah, I mean, after that, uh, let's uh, head into uh, the probably the biggest name on this list this week would be uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't played it on PC yet, but I've I've seen a lot of content on it and everything. Um, I, I completed this game on uh, PS4 Pro back when it came out and everything, and it's a gorgeous game. So I'm really excited mm -hmm. to play it on PC when I have some time. Um, but yeah, this week it got a uh, big update for... Uh, adding uh, better FSR 3 support and dynamic resolution scaling and how they intermingle together. Uh, to my understanding, it removes like some of the screen door effect and the motion yeah. artifacting and small um, like small f details like in the distance or whatever. So mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm hoping that it, it cleans up the, uh, the graphical fidelity a little bit, especially on smaller screens, because you're going to need those <laughs> settings on something oh, yeah. like a Steam Deck. Um, and hopefully it just helps us get to the maybe like the 40 fps a little easier while keeping good fidelity mm -hmm. and it, it's it's performing extremely well on the steam deck like when you when you get the chance to actually start playing it it's going to be well worth it it's so it plays so well and i'm i mean i'm not completely shocked because this is nixies so you know they they're known for a reason but yeah. no it's still i've still find it astounding how well it runs so far um still working on our review of it on our end there's just so much to go through and we if we're going to release a you know review with definitive settings we recommend we have to play through the entire thing so it, it for some games it takes a while and this is one of those games where we also have so much else like so much else to cover right now where it takes a little bit but amazing game and i and i am confident that's going to be really great on the steam deck all throughout yeah. um moving on over to a survival game i remember seeing this game last year it's called nightingale which is a really unique looking survival game that has some like it's it, it's got a very specific aesthetic to it and it's hard to describe it at least for me it's it makes me think of steampunk but i don't think it is steampunk but it makes me think of it every time i see it either way like i'll, I'll put some pictures up on the screen to show, to show it just because it's hard for me to like explain it. I'm for it to, for me, it feels like steampunk, but it's like very magical. It's super incredible looking. And recently they just put in an offline mode. So you're able to use that on the steam deck and now we can play it more portably where we don't need to connect to the internet. Uh, there are some trade-offs to this, which include there being a little bit more work that your device has to do. So performance may be hit a little bit more. But since, you know, when you're playing online, some of that, some of the processes are offloaded to the server you're playing on. So now if you're playing offline, it can't do that. Um, so it might be a little bit worse, but they are going to be optimizing it. And at, once that's done, they're going to start looking at modding support. So the, I'm, I'm, I'm much more uh, optimistic about it. And I, I'm hoping that they get it up because it's one of the coolest looking uh, survival games that i've played yeah i remember seeing this when it was announced and i really liked the look of it like the mary poppins style parasol and everything uh but yeah no i i remember a couple months ago they removed fsr3 and that was a disappointment but hopefully they start they start working to get it a little better again and push for steam deck mm -hmm. support um to my understanding xcss is in the game so that's good but um i would i would like frame I generation too so mm -hmm. I would have to check. I actually, there are some games where I'm really liking F, uh, XCSS 1.3 over FSR 3. Though, I think of all the games I played, Ghost of Tsushima is the one where I actually liked FSR 3 more. But, yeah, you know, XCSS, XCSS 1.3. You go, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. 
I was just saying XCSS 1.3 overall has a nicer look to it. And with 1.3, they increased the performance a significant amount to be on par with FSR 3. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see if, if that continues. If 3.1 makes it even better, then, you know, it's, it might be easier to say FSR 3 again. But right now, usually when I compare the two, XCSS kind of wins out. Yeah, FSR has kind of stalled since 2.2 in the visual fidelity department. Um, and yeah. it's also harder to implement, to my understanding, for de for developers to actually put in the game. It's harder to put FSR mm. in than XCSS. So that probably I not has something that. to do with that. Yeah, I could see that. Um, but yeah, mm. after uh, that, let's move on to uh, Chia, which uh, got an update this week for uh, the size of the text and also uh, some performance issues with the rain which mm -hmm. uh, were Valve's main complaints for giving it a Steam Deck Verified uh, badge. So hopefully this is them trying to work to that and mm -hmm. uh, just get to the point where they can get that verified because we, we love to see it. It's not a system <laughs> without flaws, but we love to see it. Um, Amen and then the, the other uh, one I was going to cover is uh, Leaf's Odyssey, which mm -hmm. is a, uh, like, it's like a top-down, um, it looks like a, like a town builder thing or something. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't really, I haven't played it, but, uh, it looks pretty, it looks, uh, cute. It looks fun to play. It looks pretty short. So maybe I'll pick it up. And, uh, that one fixed some issues with the, uh, Steam Dex controller, which were, uh, the analog sticks were inverted. So it's just better controller support and they're, uh, trying to, uh, just get it playable for everybody. So I'm, I'm hoping that they get it there and maybe go for a Steam Deck, uh, verified badge or something. I think I think everyone when when they do updates like that, I think everyone's aiming for Steam Deck verified if they don't have it yet. But here's hoping I've heard great things about Chia. I haven't played it yet. I haven't played Leaf's Odyssey either, but I've heard great things about both. I just need to find the time to do it. I really would love to to try them both out. But no, either way, still got to celebrate when when uh, developers are doing something to improve, you know, how it plays or just performance on the steam deck so kudos to the to any developers that are doing that and that's why we have this section you know i want to highlight them because they're important you know uh moving on i do want to actually touch on this is not really a great update but i do want to touch on no rest for the wicked which got their massive patch number two and it includes a ton of new updates they um in included fsr scaling uh, CPU optimizations, they lowered the texture resolution for performance mode, they fixed memory leaps, optimized CPU spikes, there's so much more that, that that goes into it just for performance, and then they have all the regular bug fixes and additions to it. Uh, but one of the big ones that they added in is that they specifically added optimized memory budgets for the Steam Deck. And unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it did much. And... <laughs> I was a little bit sad since I was, since they were kind of hyping it up and I was super excited to see it. And I remember getting in and I'm just like, well, this is worse. <laughs> like I'm encountering more spikes than I expected. And I think there was someone on Twitter or X that actually said that the area they were in was a little bit better. But unfortunately, in the areas I was testing, it was either much worse or it was just extremely slow to load in the world. I actually have a picture on our article that we wrote about it where I'm standing on a bridge, but the bridge hasn't loaded in yet. And I, that happened to me on SteamOS 3.5, the stable branch, and 3.7, because I tested on all three, 3.5, 6, and 7. And there was just almost no improvements. They all really played around the same. So that was a little bit disappointing. Well, at least they're trying to work on it um, yeah. and get it there for the Steam Deck. They're aware of the issues, I'm sure. So it, mm -hmm. it, it's nice to have them looking at it. But yeah, let's let's hope that they do a little more vetting next time. I do appreciate their transparency. Like they are very vocal about what they're working on. And I do appreciate that. It's just, you know, when you put in things like that to change log, you know, it gets us excited and then it just kind of falls through, which is a little bit of a shame. Yeah. So... Here's hoping that they are working on it. I'm sure they are, but no, they, they've they've been working hard. You can tell just in everything that they've kind of included in the in the patch logs. So hopefully they continue with that. Um, then we have this game called Apico, which is 
a like laid back simulated game about beekeeping. It's all very, it's very adorable. It's pixelated, got good controller support. And in the newest update, they just had their last update, which was massive. And in it, they unlocked the modding menu for the Steam Deck. So now I, I'm not sure if you were able to mod before, but now with a mod menu enabled, it should be much easier to mod. So that's that's kind of cool. And, you know, the the update also adds in new automation machines and all this other stuff into the game. So there's a lot more to experience. Uh, but yeah, that and it's the final update for the game. So it was a nice little send off. Yeah, it looks adorable. I might I might pick that one up too. I love the yeah. automation uh, and the uh, simulation uh, games. Yeah. That's kind of, that's kind of my shtick too. Like I love just like being able to build. Like I love survival games like Factorio, where you're able to build automated machines just to get everything for you. Yeah. It's it's why I when it came out I really enjoyed Satisfactory for that same reason, and I love the co op yeah. aspect of it too. So, you know. It, it, I, a Pico adding that kind of stuff. I think they already had automation machines, but I think this one added in more like higher tier automated machines because they added in a whole new uh, resource that you can make. So, you know, I'm I've I've need if I don't have the game yet, I need to get it so I can start diving into it. <laughs> um, and then the last game, the last game on this list is Warhammer Forty Thousand Rogue Trader, which actually improve steam deck font and ui in the new update as they're you know celebrating the showcase which they did last week you know there was a there was a couple others that brought in some updates that can relate to steam deck and we'll go over those a little later but just making it more playable on the steam deck and i believe they recently got the verified badge as well so that was something to celebrate Nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, again, you love to see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, the war, the, the Warhammer, I'll go a little bit more into it later, but the Warhammer, like how they handle the IP is really interesting because they just they, it's not like one singular thing. They like get all these other developers and publishers and just make they just use the same lore, the same world and all these different types of games like rogue trader is like a more traditional rpg made by the guys that made pathfinder and then you have space marine which is a third person like action game and then you have bolt gun which is a first person boomer shooter you know they have all these different types of games and i find it extremely interesting that that's how they work with the ip yeah i play uh 40k dark tide sometimes with my brother and uh, like i also uh, used to play uh vermin tide um and yeah those i mean uh, uh, that's another studio that's just making yeah. warhammer games it's really really interesting yeah I, I like seeing i like seeing them do stuff like that i like seeing like branching off like that even if it's yeah. you know even if they fail along the way or it doesn't feel as good you know i do like that they try and yeah. with the warhammer series i think they succeed like oh, yeah. i'm pretty sure as well i think uh warhammer 40k gladius I can't remember if that's how you actually say it. I could be I could be butchering it right now. No, I think it is Gladius. It's actually free to keep on Steam right now. And it's like a 4X game, like Civilization. Yeah. So, but it's it's a $40 game. So if you haven't yet, go onto Steam, just go to Warhammer 40,000 Gladius, and you you can add it to your account while this sale is going on or while the fest is going on until May 30th. And you, you can add it to your account for free and keep it forever. Yeah, I see that. Wow. Okay. I'm just going to do that right now. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's why I brought it up. Since you've been out of commission, I'm like, oh, maybe I should say this just in case he wants to put it in there. Well, it is. It's that. a free game. Why not? It's Steam Deck playable. And I see. And it's got controller support. It says partial controller support, but, you know, sometimes partial is just as good as full. Yeah. So. You know, I think uh, especially if it's free, why not take advantage of it, right? Yeah, no, it, it looks great. I mean, I just I spent ten seconds looking at it, but I mean, it like I love four X <laughs> games. I've played, uh, my, I think my favorite four X was probably Sins of a Solar Empire. I played that for so long. Ooh. I mean, it's a great game, but nothing will ever beat 
Nothing will ever beat Sid Meier's Civilization V. That specific entry is my jam. I have hundreds of hours in that one, and I and I, I still can't get into six as much as I got into five. It's just so good. Yeah, I, I was. Uh, I, I didn't play five that much. I played a lot of four though, um, and four I've tried to play too. six, and I've been. I've also had some try like trouble getting into six, but I, I should probably just double down on that. I love four X games too. So yeah. Well, now that I know that, I'm going to be pestering you about playing Civilization. Though we I'm going to pester more about Civ Abiotic five. Factor. We have we have things oh, to play already. <laughs> oh, I know. We need to continue. That was so cool. It was such it a was good so game fun. so far. We really yeah. need to play more of it. They've added hopefully more stuff we'll, too. I know. There's there's always something, but hopefully we'll get to it soon. It you just need to you know finalize and kind of get into the groove with your schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Stop commuting All right, well, today. You ready to get into the main <laughs> topics we have for today? Yeah, let's go for it. I'll let you have the first one because I know you're oh, so yeah. excited about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So earlier this week, I was recording a podcast with Retro Handhelds. And five minutes before the podcast went live, Square Enix on the official Kingdom Hearts Twitter account m- decided to announce out of nowhere that Kingdom Hearts is coming to Steam. Not Melody of Memory for whatever reason, but just Kingdom Hearts 1.5, 2.5, 2.8, and 3 are all coming to Steam, I believe, on June 13th. I forgot the date, which I'm very disappointed in. But <laughs> I'm going to look it up right now to confirm it. I I am a huge fan of the Kingdom Hearts series. It is one of my favorite series. I have a huge history with it. It is June 13th. It comes out June 13th. Um, I love the series. It, you know, hits really home to me and I'm so excited to see them finally after years of being Epic exclusive, because they have been on PC. Just no one really knew because it's Epic only. And seeing them finally coming to Steam makes me extremely happy. Um, With the Steam versions, I know for 1.5 and 2.5, I'm not sure for 2.8 or like Dream Drop Distance specifically. I'll check for that right now. Uh, Looks like it for Dream Drop Distance uh, as well. But 1.5, 2.5 and Dream Drop Distance are all getting uh, better upscaled uh, or enhanced background textures throughout the entirety of those games. So that's something that's exclusive to the Steam version, whereas for Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to have an exclusive Keyblade that you can only get from from playing on Steam. The the Keyblade's called the Dead of Night. Hmm. And it's gorgeous. Uh, Hopefully they fix the FMVs on Steam Deck too while they're at it. Yeah. Yeah. I actually did ask them about that. I, I asked and they couldn't really make a make a comment just yet. I also asked about like, you know, pricing if it's going to have a discount when it first releases, but you know, I think they're still kind of putting their messages together. I don't think they didn't answer because it's not something that's fixed. Yeah. I think it's just something that they're just putting everything together. Maybe they want to do their own formal announcement, but you know, it should be so much easier to play it on the Steam Deck now oh, just yeah. being on Steam. Like it, it immediately makes the two guides I wrote null and void because it's like why why even bother yeah I w- I i'm genuinely just shocked that it came to came to steam at all since i haven't really seen you know exclusive de- exclusive deals that last longer than one year you know I unless would it's guess like that maybe maybe they're just realizing that steam is clearly like the option like i mean it's mm-hmm. There, there's just a, like a quality of life that most other places don't have. I mean, I love uh, GOG for the DRM free and everything, but like if you release to Steam, like here for instance, like number one, it's easier to install on everything, but also mm-hmm. Steam Deck. Um, it you'll get the benefits of the shader cache on the Steam Deck, which is something you didn't have before. So now you're gonna have better performance just out of the box and mm-hmm. much better discoverability so like it's just it's free money for them basically to just throw it on steam i mean they're adding extra stuff too which is even better but if they could have just literally ported it over and everybody would have been fine with it <laughs> yeah i i think so i you want to know what i think it is i kind of convinced them 
recently they uh reported their um their finances and like how how much money they've made or did not make and they did not make that much they actually lost i think it was like around 70 yeah. percent of their revenue and yeah. one of the things that they mentioned is that they're going to reinvest they're going to stop doing platform exclusive and do multi-platform releases and they mentioned pc specifically they don't mention like steam versus epic but they mentioned pc yeah. And I think this is just part of that plan. I think when they say PC and multi-platform, I think they also mean multiple different storefronts. And That's true, yeah. I think they're going to see a huge boost in revenue just oh, from yeah. releasing on Steam. You know, I mean, and yeah, I'm like, su I'm surprised it's taken this long to convince them. I'm sure, like when they put over a Final Fantasy VII remake, I'm sure they saw a solid boost after like having one year of Xbox. Or not Xbox. Uh, one year of Epic exclusive. Was it one year or was it six months? I think it was one year. I my my guess is one year, but I cannot remember. Either way, I know it was exclusive on Epic for some time. Yeah. And then it came over to Steam, and I I'm I'm just shocked that they would see that and still feel like you know having an exclusive on Epic versus just platform parity on PC, you know is it is is not viable like yeah well, i'm unless sure they're Epic getting bankrolled to a point amount. yeah exactly yeah like that's how it is for a lot of the games i know control it was that way um mm -hmm. just uh i mean alan wake 2 is still not out on steam and i am in pain yeah. every day because of it um <laughs> i don't think it's going to come to st i don't think it's going to come to steam though because i'm pretty sure epic published it well didn't they also publish control uh, it's remedy like i think it i think it they is. i think it was it a is. one year exclusive and then they ported it over to steam after a year or two i'm I'm checking no control was 505 games oh damn okay well yeah you might be so, right i'll just have to so play I, on something but i'm pretty PC. sure <laughs> i'm pretty sure ellen wake 2 is is epic published so it's unfortunate. I I don't think it'll come to Steam. I would love it to. Don't get me wrong. Like Alan Wake Two is an amazing game, and I would love for it to come to Steam. I would love to I play just, it. <laughs> that it's it's really good. It's re really really good. But you know, just seeing seeing Kingdom Hearts kind of make its way to Steam, you know, made me extremely happy. I cannot say that enough. It just it was so so cool seeing that announcement finally. And I've been, I, again, one of my favorite series, it's like one, it's like the series that got me into gaming in general. Yeah. Like I was kind of doing it. It was fun. And then I played kingdom hearts and I was like, whoa, this is peak gaming. <laughs> Obviously everyone's got their own definition of it. But for me, when I was, oh man, when did kingdom hearts come out? It was like 2005. Yeah, it was solidly into the PS2's lifespan. It might have been 04. Yeah. I want to say it was 04 for some reason. I'm looking it up right now because I clearly don't remember. Oh, no. <laughs> we were both wrong. It was 2002. Um, oh. <laughs> I thought it was I thought it was a little bit later. I, I but... never really got into it, so that's my excuse. What's yours, Noah? Uh, my excuse is <laughs> at that time, I was six, so... You were six that's in 2000. Oh man, I'm older. Than, I'm, I'm a decent amount older than you. That's that's sad to me. What? Why is that sad? Do I just come off like an old man? Because no, I, I just I, I, I just had <laughs> I just had a notion that we were similar in age, and you're like three or four years younger than me. Yeah. To be honest, funny enough, of everyone that works like on Steam Deck HQ, like our writers, the people on the back end, I'm still the youngest. <laughs> Like it, I I just think that's funny that like I'm still the youngest of everyone working there and and all the people that we've met like content creators I I believe I'm still the youngest out of all of them too. <laughs> Maybe not high tech low life. I don't know his age. He might be younger than me. Yeah, I have no idea. I but think everyone I'm, else, I'm, is... I'm younger than most, which is why it was surprising to me that you are younger than me. Well, I I aim to I aim to surprise. But yeah, I I started Kingdom Hearts when I was six, so it, it may might have been seven. I don't know if I got it on like release day, but I remember playing and I was just blown away by the game. It was so much fun for being six or seven. You know, button mashing to hell and back it was great. You know, it was Disney. It was you know all these lights and it was a big story about friendship. How can you not like that? 
Yeah. I still need so. to get into it. I wasn't I wasn't big into it at the time. And I've uh, I mean, I've since completed Kingdom Hearts one, but um, mm. and I enjoy the story and everything. Uh, the gameplay is hit or miss for me, but I'm going to keep trying to get into it. Damn it. I'm surprised you have not played two because Kingdom, I've Kingdom Hearts it. one is good, but two is so much better. I've played it and I, I just like. I, I think it's the combat style for me. It's just like, it doesn't hit for me. And I, I think, I don't know if I need to focus on it more or it's just never going to hit, but I'm going to keep trying. I will at it's least okay. bash my head against it until it's done. Well, now that it's coming to steam, I'm going to be even more like pushy to you specifically. That's fair. Like, That's fair. You're, you're going to see like a message like every day or every other day, just be like, Hey, where are you at in kingdom hearts? <laughs> hey, send, are you playing kingdom hearts? Send a picture. I'd love to see. <laughs> Need no, any sorry, tips? I've trails. played all of them about five times. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but I'm I'm very excited, and hopefully this this will make it significantly easier to play on the Steam Deck. And I believe that Square knows about the issues with like the cutscenes, so hopefully they are working on those issues and they are going to fix it for the Steam release because this is the perfect time to do it. I mean, they're doing graphical enhancements, so <laughs> going over to like. Going, going, going over to also fix the cutscenes. I mean, doesn't seem like it's extremely far out of their way if they're already manipulating little bits of it here and there. Yeah, yeah. So, and that would be nice because with these cutscene issues, we can't play or watch uh, like 358 over two days, uh, recoded or uh, back cover on 2.8. Yeah. So, it'd be nice to be able to utilize those. But you know looking forward to it it's going to come out june 13th and i'm i'm praying i'm praying that we are able to review it because it would be a dream come true and it would be one of the easiest games for me to review because not only have i played them on epic so i know around what performance is going to be but i've played through all the games so i know how i know where the spots are that like might be a little bit heavier and also, I just love the games. I'm going to be a very, it's going to be a very biased review, unfortunately, because I, I love the games and I can't, I can't let someone else review it. These are, this is my bread and butter. <laughs> at least you but own up on to, to it. The next, uh, hmm? I said, at least you own up to it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, I, I'm, you know, I'm very upfront with my bias. I know. <laughs> Uh, but on to the next topic. Do you want to enter in this one? Because I'll I'll say my piece later, but you're the one that brought this up originally. So, yeah, yeah. I sent this over to you a couple of days ago whenever I saw the yeah. news. Um, it was uh, IGN Entertainment, which is obviously the company that owns IGN. And they ended up purchasing a whole bunch of uh, other games news outlets so like Eurogamer, gi vg247 rock paper shotgun uh let's see and it looks like oh and dice breaker is another one yeah and um, then they hold shares in like digital foundry and hookshot which operates like nintendo life push square pure xbox time extension and, out yep. and then there's outside xbox it's it's a lot yep and they already owned uh, Map Genie. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, How long to beat? <laughs> no I didn't idea. know they owned that, and I use that I service. Did, I'm sh I'm shocked that they own How Long to Be. I knew they owned yeah. Humble Bundle. I knew yes, that I, one. Yeah. I did not know they knew they had How Long to Beat. That yeah. one is is new to me. And like, I mean, I I'm not a big fan of like IGN like actual ign.com reviews like i i tend mm -hmm. to not agree with their takes um which is neither here nor there but um i just don't like more corporate consolidation i yeah. don't know uh it just it seems like one player holds too many cards in the game especially for journalism which like needs to be independent in order to be impartial yeah. and just make sure that everything kind of balances out um mm -hmm. i mean like it might not affect anything, but now I'm going to have to think twice if Eurogamer gives something yeah. the, a similar score to IGN. I'm going to be like, wait a second, mm -hmm. is that because they're working together on this? Like, I, I don't know anymore. And that just leads to less trust in all the brands, unfortunately. It, um, it, uh, it plants a seed of doubt. Yeah, exactly. You no, know, yeah. it's... It's it's something that uh, being a journalist myself, like I, you know, do have strong feelings for this. And like, 
you know, I don't want to say that it will compromise the integrity of some of these sites, but it's also, like you said, there's that seed of doubt there. It'd be like, well, you know, did IGN do anything about this? Like, have they kind of dipped their hand in anything? Um, And I think it's showing a little bit already because when they did acquire these publications, uh, they already found some redundancies and fired or laid off some incredible reporters. I actually didn't know that. That's that. I mean, I expected it because that's just the norm for these corporate consolidations, unfortunately, but that's, it's sad to see that it has already happened. Like, or hear that. Yeah. I I remember when, when this happened and the day of, and I remember seeing, and I can't remember who it was, but it was someone that actually worked at uh, game industry or gamesindustry.biz or GI. Uh, And he'd been working there and he helped bring it up for like 15 years. And he was, he was laid off, which is so disappointing because, you know, a a lot of these things, like what happened with the escapist as well and how uh, the incredible teams there were, you know, basically they had, they were ripped away from their jobs. Their work was thrown out to the side essentially. And it's really sad to see. And like with the escapist, they kind of turned it into a win because they started second wind and it's wonderful. You know, I love seeing it. I love second wind, especially Yahtzee over there. I love, uh, I love Ben Yahtzee Croshaw. He's so good. See, I actually, I haven't, I haven't met him. I haven't said hi, but I'm almost a hundred percent sure I saw him at the mix at GDC. I just did not say hi. And I don't know if it was because of nerves or I got distracted, but I was just like, damn. I, when I left there, I was like, damn, I should have said hi. That would have I've been, been nice. watching him since like 2012. That would have been surreal. I actually just got <laughs> I haven't played it yet, but uh, Nick uh, just sent over a couple copies of Starstruck Vagabond, which is Yahtzee's game. Oh, yeah. So okay. I'm looking in. I'm looking forward to starting that this weekend. Um, but I just haven't, I haven't had the chance yet, but it was like super, super nice of him to do. And I'm really looking forward to it. And there's just, there's a whole thing that's going on with them and it's just really disappointing, but you know, disappointing, not like that. It's affecting him so much. Like he's gotten these like death threats and he's just trying to be like completely upfront and honest about like some of the stuff going on. Uh, but I won't go too far into that because I know it's a very, um, very hot topic in general. Um, but when it comes to IGN acquiring more companies, it's similar to like Xbox getting all these companies too. You know, we saw them close like Tango, which was extremely disappointing. And what was it? Arcane Austin. And they consolidated a different, uh, a different studio. And it's just, we're seeing something like that happen. And I'm worried for the future of, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these uh, companies and, you know, publications that were just acquired and like the shares that are in like, you know, digital foundry, for instance, like I love digital foundry, you know, the the guys there are awesome. They're so in depth. It's super cool to see. I'm worried about like how they're going to be affected by this. Luckily they only hold shares, but like, you know, IGN is a huge corporation. They could get more shares and have majority hold. Yeah, no, exactly. Like I think doesn't, I thought uh, Eurogamer held. I thought that was uh, Digital Foundry as well. Uh, I'm pretty sure Digital Foundry is its own thing, but you're, they like it's like the similar partnership that like you and I have, where like they post on Eurogamer exclusively, something along yeah, those I lines. Should. I could be completely wrong, clearly, but that's what I thought. No, it says I have Digital to Foundry actually, is like, a section of Eurogamer.net that provides in-depth technical analysis. So I'm not sure what section means, but uh, it yeah, seems was... like it's it, they're at least very closely intermingled. So I'm a little worried about yeah. that because I also love Digital Foundry. I think they're putting out some of the best content out there, especially yeah. for like these game engine analysis uh, videos and uh, it's it's like right up my my alley. It's the, uh, very similar to my content. It's very technical. Mm-hmm. It's very uh, like scientific in the way they're doing it. Um, and Eurogamer, like if I if I want to go to see a general review for something, that's usually where I go for it. Um, or uh, obviously Metacritic, but like Eurogamer is where I tend to trend. So now I'm going to have to think about that 
whenever I go to their site because yeah. it's it's the same again same network as IGN which is known to dip their fingers into a lot of things and I don't it's yeah. just going to be that seeded out like you said it's it's a shame because di- like you said Digital Foundry is like one of the best like one of the best like gaming outlets right now like I love their their in depth analysis and you know I think like even we take a lot of inspiration like in the Ghost of Tsushima video we did like you know, it takes a lot of inspiration from what Digital Foundry does. Yeah. And now it's like that seed of doubts there. And I don't want it to be there, especially not for Digital Foundry. Yeah. And it's just, it's a, it's a shame. And I really hope that IGN, like, you know, doesn't dive more into, into them to like take more of their shares and have a majority hold. Um, just from what I was reading, though, I, I'm pretty sure Digital Foundry started off independent and they partnered with, um, okay. they partnered with Eurogamer. At least I really hope that's what it is. And then I, I mean, when it says they they have shares, I assume that means Digital Foundry went public. But I didn't know that exactly. It's it's a very complicated. I'm not sure exactly what the relationship is. You know. Uh, let's see. So okay. it's that's something. It, it means something that IGN actually, won't yeah. own Digital Foundry outright, but will presumably still run their content via Eurogamer. So they don't yeah. actually own it. Okay. Well, that's that's still good. But I mean, it it might have the same outcome if they just don't want to publish yeah. something because uh, Digital Foundry like says their piece for something for some reason or something. Then that could still end up being curation and thus yeah. steering their content. I'm I'm hoping it doesn't come to that. But like I, I don't know. It's just it, that's something you have to ask with these corporate consolidations. Like. Like, yes, I want to trust these people. And like, they have given me no reason to distrust them yet. But it's mm-hmm. just, it's hard when so much one player holds so much sway over the whole industry. This is like no. half of the bigger uh, news outlets now is owned by one company. It's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit scary. Yeah. Just in general, just, it, 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 it worries me on a larger scale. And it's like one of the reasons, like I wrote a whole article recently about how we're proudly still independent and we're going to stay that way. Um, so that was just, I, I, I just went into like an appreciation article because I know right now, especially with all the changes with Google, AI, and uh, encroaching like big corporations that now like like IGN holds all these all these outlets now. You know, which probably means if they like are able to pay to get like better treatment on Google or something like that, that means all of these, all these companies are going to be able to benefit from that. Whereas like, you know, the independent outlets are not going to be able to. So, you know, we are still alive thanks to, you know, the community, you know, and it's amazing and we couldn't appreciate like you guys more. Like it's, it's amazing being able to survive. Um, it is why we're starting to look more into video content. You know, we have a couple more videos in the, in the, I guess in the background, like that we're working on. It takes us a little bit longer cause we're just not used to it. And I also have no time to edit. So, you know, we we're looking into getting some editors and you know, we have, we have a couple that we're talking to right now, but it's it you know we're trying to diversify because i think it's just going to be significantly harder for us to survive otherwise and it's sad that we have to do something like that just to survive but you know that's that's just what we got to do right now but like on the site like people are still coming to the sites they're still checking out the content you know we're we love interacting with everyone on youtube on twitter in the comments of our website on discord you know so I just want to take a moment in this section to say thank you. Thank you for supporting us. And if there are any other independent uh, outlets uh, that you read from, like gaming on Linux, like please support them. You know, we, we need it as much as humanly possible. Like we can survive right now, but with AI being able to scrape and Google pushing up um, and getting worse in its search, like I've actually gone and I've looked for similar searches on both Google and Bing. And we are we are at the top when it comes to Bing. So our SEO is great, but Google is just getting worse. Yeah. Like I believe it was, what was it? It was Mullet Mad Jack. I searched Mullet Mad Jack Steam Deck. That's it. Google, it brought up the Steam link 
and then it brought up all these other random mullet mad jack links that had nothing to do with the steam yeah. deck i searched the same query on bing we're the we're at the top we're the number one slot and this was maybe like three or four hours after we published our review yeah. like you know bing recognized and put it right at the top already so like it's super super wonderful to see and i'm really happy about that but it's just it just shows that you know them being the biggest like google being the biggest um outlet right now or the biggest search engine it's making it very hard for new uh it's making it very hard for new and independent outlets to survive yeah. and hopefully we'll see some corrections from the algorithm make it easier i i have I have a couple of friends who their site is just like tanking right now and almost dead because Google is just not, not ranking them at all. Yeah. But hopefully that'll change because they make quality content. I'd love to see them, you know, come back. Yeah, no, I, I think there was actually a study done recently where it proved that Google's results are worse. And then the last few days they put that AI in there and it's um, harmful at best. Uh, yeah. with some of the results it's feeding out so oh, yeah God. i mean um i like i host my own search engine but like the, in general like outside of that if i need another one i use bing now it's like it's weird to say because it was a joke for so long but I know. like <laughs> it's i uh, remember i it's, remember it's so when we were better. like I, re I remember the good old days where we'd joke around and be like, you know, you got to look at something on Bing. Like, <laughs> are you seriously using Bing? And now I'm like, yeah, of course I use Bing. I actually get results. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it's not just nothing for four pages. Like, Google's figured out exactly. that they have financial incentive to put the good articles on page four or five because they're going to get more views. So it's which is the worst thing so. too because of all the companies that need more money google is not one of them like of all the companies <laughs> yes but that doesn't mean i mean they didn't get where they got by being like i i don't know like frugal like they're they're greedy no. like that's it like it's of just course. when you get to a certain scale that's all you can chase and like i'm not blaming anybody at google like ex except for maybe the like sea levels or something but yeah like it's it, it, at a certain scale it just becomes completely profit driven so it, it, it like it makes sense mm -hmm. and if there's no legislation for it then it, there's no reason for no incentive for them to not do that so they'll yeah. just go hog wild and it, we're i think we're reaching a critical mass where people are starting to realize that but um i did a what was it i did read an article on the verge where they interviewed the ceo of google and it was just really interesting because they specifically brought up, you know, independent sites are like, uh, we don't want these changes. And it seemed like he was trying to justify and try to say like, this was more in regards to the AI, but they, he was trying to like say that like, oh, the AI actually, you know, increases, you know, traffic, it increases clicks. We've seen it. And then the interviewer asked if we could see the data and information. He just downplayed it completely. He's like, well, if people want it, you know, maybe we could do something that like, it just seemed like he was just trying to continually say that, oh, the data is here. Yeah. Other people are saying the data is here, but we won't release the data. Yeah. So no one else can verify that. Well, and they I also think don't that's want a... people to know how much data they have. Oh, yeah. It's like Which straight up tons. creepy how much they have. Like if you use Chrome, like you're you're done, bud. Like, I mean, yeah. they have uh, like all your data. So I don't know. Oh, yeah. No, uh, I'm, I'm not surprised. It's just it's just a shame seeing it because, yeah. you know, for independent sites, for independent creators, you know, it's it it becomes something that isn't viable to do on your own. Like you, we can't do this through Google anymore. Like I feel compelled to do YouTube, which is not my bread and butter. Like I, that's not my thing. Yeah. You know, so well, I mean, I'm yeah. learning just so that I can like make sure that we're still around. You know, when unfortunately we're going to have to like really branch out and can't rely on Google anymore. Yeah. And it's already very hard to rely on Google now. So it's like <laughs> with their algorithm changes, pushing down, like we're very lucky. We're very lucky that we still rank and apparently people still find us on like uh discover and news, which I can't find us on Google news. I know Liam from gaming on Linux. He searched and he's like, he's asked me multiple times. He's like, why can't I find you on Google news? And I'm like, I don't know. I I don't know. <laughs> like 
we're definitely registered. Our our pages are indexing. So the only thing I can think of is just Google. Just, yeah. It's just Google. Like I'm we're waiting on I just got us into like we're waiting on approval, but I got us into like the Bing Pub Hub, which is like their news. So we should be okay. appearing there. And I would love to see if we actually appear there. Because if we appear there and not Google, something's up. I don't know what it is, but something's up. But that was that was just extremely, you know, disappointing to see all these changes and IGN acquiring, you know, outlets that they don't need. And now they just have not a monopoly, but they've got a very big stronghold for just gaming websites or gaming press outlets in general. So I'm really hoping that it doesn't change how independently operated they are, but it does make me worry that now there could be some bias. Yeah, no, I get that. It's, it's hard. Like it, yeah, there's like it's it's just more things that the viewer needs to worry about and everything. And I just want to like a review. I'm not asking for like healthcare here. I'm just like, hey, I just want to know how good this game is. Like, <laughs> but it's like I mean, when I want when I need to spend sixty bucks on a new game or something, I want to make sure my purchase goes somewhere that I like actually want it to. And it's yeah. just it's just removing like just that layer of confidence that I had by checking four sites. I'm going to get four different opinions. Mm -hmm. now if you check the four sites that you might regularly frequent they might all have similar opinions and then you might think well maybe it's just skewed exactly you're gonna have that in the back of your mind maybe it isn't you know just because ign acquired these doesn't mean that they're going to be like skewed but you'll never know a hundred percent because ign owns all of them yeah, well, I mean, historically, they all have, they have all had a, a variance based on the reviewers' preferences and everything else. But mm-hmm. like, if they start to consolidate and get closer together, that's just going to be like, okay, well, that's kind of weird. So it already is. <laughs> it's already very, very scary, and I, I really do hope that everything. It, I really do hope they stay independent enough to not not have these biases that are very clear. But there's no way that the seed of doubt is going to be completely eliminated from my mind. Yeah. Well, on to some more lighter news. Because <laughs> that that's <laughs> that's a heavy one that just makes me sad. Yeah, um, me too, yeah. There were two uh there were two big showcases that happened over the last over the last week. And we had a tiny build connect, which was uh for the publisher Tiny Build to show off their upcoming games and some upcoming updates. And Warhammer had their Warhammer Skulls showcase. And both of them like showed off some really cool upcoming games and just new uh, updates for their older games. Uh, the Tiny Build one showed more of their upcoming games. And it had some really cool ones. I've seen Voin. Voin is like this first person. Uh, is it a roguelike? I'm, see, I really wish. No. Uh, yeah, it is. I knew I was thinking of the right game. So it's this first person roguelike. It looks so cool. Uh and I'm really I'm really looking forward to that one. It looks like it could run on the Steam Deck just from the minimum system requirements. But they also showed off like some like there's a Streets of Rogue 2 update that's going to come in the PC gaming show. Uh not for broadcast got a new DLC. Uh Train Valley World got its release date. Uh Punch Club 2 got a new DLC reveal and Kingmakers Oh man, Kingmakers got a new trailer showing a tank taking down, taking down a medieval castle, which was sick. Um, if you're not sure about what Kingmakers is, this is this game. This game was announced earlier this year, and basically the trailer came and showed like some guy just driving in like a normal setting. It kind of looked like the Last of Us world, and then the, he just did a Back to the Future teleport to the medieval times and you just see a car plowing through all these like knights and like then the guy gets out and he just starts shooting them so the entire game is basically you like a modern modern soldier versus (laughs) all of these like medieval like castles people all this stuff it's insane it reminds me of the uh, movie kung fury if you've ever seen that i don't think i have I definitely check it out. I think it's on Netflix. Uh, 
I'll, I, I'll remember to send it to you after this. Uh, yeah, or link please. To it. It's it's hilarious. It's only like a 45 minute thing, but it's uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like some guy goes back into like medieval times and some bullshit happens. It's great. Um, but yeah, I mean, out of the uh, tiny build showcase, uh, there are a couple of games I am interested in here, like uh, Train Valley World. I, I really like uh, like transportation mm -hmm. sims, same as 4X, etc um yeah the not for broadcast game i actually didn't know about and now they're having a new dlc it's actually 70 percent <laughs> off right now the game yeah and there's actually there's like, a lot of publisher sales no there's a lot of publisher sales we actually just posted an article with all the publisher sales happening right now uh there's some that end on the 27th so tiny build is not like the sales for like train or not train valley uh for for any of their games like not for broadcast are going are not going to be on sale on like monday when we post this podcast so unfortunately there's some that aren't going to be around but like you know it's it's a great for all the patrons watching it's a really great deal <laughs> and like streets of rogue is like my one of my favorite tiny build games so that one like i'm so excited for number two and then there's tiny kin which i'm super excited for or not excited for that's it. out it's a great deal i was looking at duck side which cra really crazy looking game basically it's like daisy or rust but you're a duck yeah and that's, i'm seeing that that's now. the pitch this... i i kind of love it it's it's definitely a meme game it's like a totally accurate yeah. game but like yeah I, i'm watching the trailer for it right now and it looks it looks like it would be a great game to play with a couple of friends just like just yeah. a late night just like yeah let's go blow some shit up as ducks <laughs> <laughs> i actually i just uh i got an email about it recently about possibly uh participating in a beta so i'm really hoping i'm really hoping i get the chance to because that would be so cool that would be funny like, yeah. it, it looks and the looking at the like requirements for it Looks like it could run on the Steam Day. It might be 30 frames per second or like 40 because it's uh, I, GPU wise, it's it's asking for a nine a GTX 960. But I don't know. I think I think it could be a good Steam Deck game. I think it could. I really it, like, and it could be like something for those Rust fans out there. Since uh, uh, Rust, I don't think you can play on Steam Deck. I think the anti cheat no doesn't work. You can yeah. play like alone, but no, the yeah. anti cheat isn't configured to. So and it's easy anti cheat, edge. so they could bring it over. Yeah, but... yeah, I, I know that the the main developer for Rust has some strong feelings on that, so I won't get into mm -hmm. that here. But yeah, I mean, like if this <laughs> if this doesn't have the same problem, then this could scratch your itch on the go, like when you're or plays with yeah. friends at a cafe or something. I don't know. Um, it'd be funny to play this in public, right? Um, and I'm then, also yeah. one last one last game from that showcase that I'm really looking forward to is this game called Sand. And it reminded me of Sandland, which just came out from uh Bandai Namco last month. And yeah, I think it was about it's, ago, yeah. I think it was last month. Uh really cool game. I really liked it. Uh, it felt a little bit a little bit uh generic in the open world, but the graphics are beautiful, the story is tight. And I really like the vehicle gameplay. Like just any in any combat with the vehicle felt really nice. Yeah. Um, but sand, it just it looks like an open world, you know, a regular open world survival game. But I really like the aesthetic to it, and I do like that it takes place like on the desert. It kind of gives me like a steampunk vibe to it as well. It's it's super cool. I already like you can request access to like be in the play test i don't think they've started it yet but they're going to have a play test for it so you can actually go and apply to it on steam right now and yeah. i already did i put in my my play test thing so nice. <laughs> yeah. i'm i'm hoping i get in it uh because i would love to test it on the steam deck but that one you know that requirement is a gtx 760 so that's an even lower uh, gpu requirement yeah you could probably get so a 45 it, or higher off of that yeah Though oddly enough, I've I'm I usually when I see memory requirements, it's usually like eight gigabytes, sixteen gigabytes. I've even seen twelve sometimes. This one is ten, which it should be fine on the Steam Deck, but it's yeah. just an odd for me. It's an odd number to see. Yeah, I mean, it could be just that they've they've dialed it in enough to know exactly what their budget is, mm -hmm. um, or they which could be I, if, I, if I, they are going for Steam Deck verified, they could be trying 
to make it so that the VRAM can expand if necessary mm -hmm. as well. Um, because, I mean, those extra two gigs are huge if uh, mm -hmm. you're trying to relieve the memory pressure during, uh, yeah. like, swaps or something. So, I mean, hopefully they've just dialed it in enough. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it looks good. I like the, uh, I really like uh, moving base survival crafting things, like Void Train Excellent. was one of my favorite uh, Andes in the past couple of years. Uh, mm -hmm. So I would I would definitely check out Sand when it uh, pops up in beta. It says summer 2024, so hopefully soon. Here's here's hoping like it is it's super cool to see, but one of the other like the other showcase actually had me pretty excited too. So the Warhammer showcase happened as well, and for this one we got some new we got some more details about like Space Marine 2's multiplayer modes, which it's going to have three different modes from what I know. There's going to be the like three player campaign. There's the three player co op mode called Operations, where you have classes that you can upgrade and customize. And then you have a six versus six PVP mode called Eternal War. And that's really cool too. I'm from what I can tell, I think I feel Space Marine 2 is gonna run on the Steam Deck. I have a feeling because Focus Entertainment is publishing and they I know like I've talked to them, they do test their games on the Steam Deck on like a publisher level. So I I'm I have a feeling that Space Marine 2 is going to be at least 30 frames per second, which that's going to be nuts. Um, but on top of that, they like they announced the open beta for their like twisted uh, vehicle combat game called Speed Freaks. It reminds me of the Twisted series. Is that what it's called? Metal? Am I... Twisted Metal. Yeah, I keep forgetting yeah. the metal part. I just keep calling it Twisted, but it reminds me of the series, and it looks gorgeous so you know the open beta i believe is up right now so you can uh you can try it out for yourself um there was some dlcs announced for like warhammer 3 uh rogue trader got steam deck verified and is getting a new dlc that adds like 15 hours of content which for a dlc is pretty solid but it is a you know rpg so it makes sense though there is a new romanceable partner i'll leave it at that um <laughs> 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 uh battle sector got a new update uh gladius which i mentioned before is free to keep so if you it, that should be free to keep until if you redeem it by may 30th so there is still time to do it um bolt gun is getting a new dlc uh dark tide and vermintide 2 are both getting new content which is always great uh inquisitor uh, got offline mode, which I was mentioning before when we went over Rogue Trader. So Inquisitor got a full offline mode, which is great if you're playing like on the Steam Deck yeah. um, and is getting a new DLC uh, later this year. And then finally, they revealed the sequel to Mechanicus, which was announced. And that, that was... Honestly, overall, both these showcases, it's hard... It's hard for me to choose if there's one I like more. I think there are more interesting games to look at on like tiny builds, but I think I was personally more excited for the Warhammer stuff. You know, I Space Marine 2 is incredible. I can't wait for that. Um, Rogue Trader looks amazing. I don't have it yet. I really need to get it because both these games, the Warhammer ones are on sale right now and they're going to be on sale until May 30th. So any games that are shown here or like that are on that were from the the showcase are going to be on sale um a little bit after this podcast is posted so definitely run over there to pick them up um and i liked i like bolt gun a lot so the dlc is exciting it's just overall like i'm i'm pretty excited for the warhammer content yeah i would say like uh vermin tide too i mean uh, i got i must have started playing that in 2018 when it came out but uh, that's a great game. It's, it's more of a medieval mm -hmm. setting, if you like that kind of thing. And then 40k um, uh, Dark Tide is a very, very good game that I love playing. Mm -hmm. So definitely check that out if you are into like a first-person shooter. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like a squad-based thing where you go in mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's a randomly generated uh, map and everything. And it's uh it's it's a lot of fun just get in get out it's like a half an hour round um and with their first in game event they have a ton of new stuff here and they've put out basically the game size and updates in the last 
three or four mm -hmm. months. So definitely check that out if you like that kind of thing. No, it's really like dark. I, re I remember playing Vermintide 2 since it came out as well. Yeah. I think in, in with this, like with the showcase, they actually are starting to go back into versus mode and they're doing an alpha for it, which I think is really cool. But like Vermintide, if you enjoy like, oh, what is it? Um, If you enjoy like Left 4 Dead S games, I feel like yeah. Vermintide 2 is like the perfect fit for that because it is it is a uh, Left 4 Dead esque, but I feel like there's more RPG elements to it that Left 4 Dead doesn't have. Yeah. And Dark Tide, Dark Tide is. Would you say it's similar to Left 4 Dead as well? Because when it first came out, that's what I had initially thought, but it feels like a more, uh, I guess, a more RPG styled version. Um, of I think they're both pretty close. I think they both have more RPG elements, but they do have the Left 4 Dead DNA in them. Like they got the. Mm -hmm like the squad based like track combat kind of thing. Um I will say that the the Dark Tide missions are kind of more self-contained than the Vermintide mm -hmm. ones. The Vermintide ones feel more like an RPG in the fact that they're like an adventure and there's like little branching paths and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um but both are very similar first person shooter kind of things. One's just like far future and one's far past kind of vibes. Um but yeah, I, I would say both of them are very. Uh, it's like a Left 4 Dead Destiny mashup. It's kind of hard to, like, <laughs> it's really hard to describe. But uh, like, if you if you like first person shooter, like squad based things, like I think that it would mm -hmm. it would be your jam. And and you know, I believe Vermintide Two can run all right on the Steam Deck, though it does have yes. some anti cheat issues. It is it's still playable. Multiplayer is still playable on the Steam Deck. But you have to, I believe, the person on the Steam Deck has to host. Um, Interesting. Okay. But it's been a while. Maybe they've updated it. But it's on a great sale. Eighty percent off for Vermintide Two is for at like six bucks is a great deal. Uh, Dark Tide, I believe they've had updates to make it more playable on the Steam Deck. But I have not gone back to check it out again, which I really need to do because I love the concept behind it. Um, but like, what is it? A lot of their games are on sale right now. Like. Bolt Gun is on 35% off. I really liked playing it on the Steam Deck. Uh, Inquisitor is on sale for like 80% off. So that might be a great way to, you know, get into it before off. Or I think offline mode's in now. So, you know, great way to get into it and experience it in offline, which is exciting. Um, I might, I don't have Inquisitor yet, but I do see a definitive edition right here. And it's, 80% off it's only 18 bucks I might have to, I might not be able to help myself <laughs> I think I'm going to have to do it and I'm going to try to get you to get it too because there is online co-op so I'll keep that in mind I'm working on it. <laughs> I'll work on it <laughs> there's so many there's so many cool games I know it's gonna it's it's hard yeah yeah there's a lot um, there's a lot coming out this year it's it's just like last year it's just yeah. like constant good stuff Except this time it's all indies. Yes, yeah, that, which is that's, arguably that makes more it even compelling. more exciting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know the thing about the thing about indies, they're able to really like go nuts. You know yeah. they can they they are not going to be as constrained as like the AAA studios and can really be like try new things and be yeah, exactly. very um, very experimental. Be very it. special. Yeah. So I'm very excited to see uh, to see what what else is coming, um, but. Before before we get into what's uh, been coming or what what we've been playing like recently that's coming out or just came out, there are two other deals I do want to bring up because I just think they're amazing deals for people on the Steam Deck. There is a new Humble Bundle where you can get a bunch of first person shooters that were all uh, remastered from Night Dive Studios, and if you've played uh, the Turok series, the remade or the remastered Turok series on Steam. Um, PO Definitive Edition, which just came out, System Shock, the remake System Shock, those were all Night Dive. And they they take these games and they basically remake them or remaster them using their proprietary engine. And it it adds modern controls and better textures and all this stuff to it while keeping the DNA of what made it so special you know in 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 the past it still feels like the original games it just runs faster it looks better and it's easier to actually control and they have a bundle just filled with their stuff on 
on humble right now it's like uh 20 bucks for everything it includes the entire turok series rise of the triad power slave doom 64 uh, tur- uh forsaken remastered blood fresh supply and sin gold which blood fresh supply i've heard it, it is rated unsupported but it is reported to work you might have to change some things but it, it does work and it's one of my favorite one of my favorite bundles that's there right now other than the monster hunter one so if you're if you're looking for more first person shooters on the steam deck i would definitely look into this because i feel like that's one of the few um genres that are very hard to run on the steam deck because they need do need a higher frame rate yeah and then fanatical has a build their build your own play on the go bundle where all the games in it are steam deck verified so I would I would say it has a solid solid amount of choices in here. Like Grime is a great game, Children of Morta, um, lawn mowing simulators in there. So yeah. if you want to mow some lawns on the go. Um and we've still got we've got Patch Quest, Trifox, Tesla Grad Remastered. There there's a bunch of games in here and you can pick and choose specific ones. So you can choose three games, five games, or eight games. And Depending on how many you choose, you'll either pay five dollars, seven dollars, or ten dollars for all of them. Um, but either way, both those both those bundles are fantastic to expand your Steam Deck library. So if I had to choose one, honestly, I'm I'm going with the Night Dive bundle. Like it's just it's just too good, especially for all the Turok games. Yeah, the Turok. I haven't played the. <laughs> sorry, I was I was reading the Fanatical bundle. I saw I was on the no. play on the Go one. <laughs> I was I was like, what the hell is Frog Detective? Anyway, um, <laughs> the uh, the Turok yeah. games uh, the uh, game I played on, Steam, on the N sixty four. I haven't played the remasters, but the the OG <laughs> Turoks on N sixty four are some very fond childhood memories. So I might have to pick up that bundle. I I mean I would. It really does keep the DNA of the original games without like getting rid of them. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah, the the modern controls would be very nice because I do remember that they were they were a little clunky back in the day. But what do you expect for a controller made for spiders? Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> valid. <laughs> but either way, they're great deals, and you can't go wrong with either of them. And I believe they're still going to be available for a bit after this. I don't remember exactly when, so um, we'll put the links in the description. They are going to be affiliate links, so if you do get them through our links, thank you for supporting us. Um, but I did also want to talk about a couple games that are coming out or have already released. Uh, Hellblade 2 released it last week, and we did a first impressions article of how it is on the Steam Deck. And it's playable. I wouldn't say it's optimal, but it's playable. Um, on the lowest settings, like without compromising the visuals, which is one of the biggest elements of the game, uh, there are drops under 30. There are going to be some parts where it is in the twenties. Is it playable? Yes. But would I say it's enjoyable as of right now? mm, Not, not entirely. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it enjoyable to what, to how you could enjoy it or should enjoy it. Yeah, I think um, I think Hellblade One had some Steam Deck specific updates right around the beginning, like when the Steam Deck came out. Uh, yeah. The studio seems to be very receptive to people wanting to play on the Steam Deck, so I'm I'm hoping that they uh, they put out some optimizations for Hellblade Two. Uh, does it have mm-hmm. FSR or anything yet? FSR three. It maybe? does. It has FSR and XCSS. Does it have frame gen? Uh, not I. I believe it does, but it does not on Steam Deck. Oh, okay. Well, um, I've not seen I've not seen a, a developer implementation of frame generation on the Steam Deck that works. Yeah, that's I think that's the problem. the The driver right now is a little um, like I think three point seven might bring the driver up to where it needs to work, uh, or it will start to mm-hmm. work more frequently. Um, honestly, I've had the best luck with the frame generation mods like Luke FC yeah. and um, yeah. uh, what's the other one? Uh, Pure Darks, uh, like uh, FSR3 mods. Those work basically every time I try them. 
Um, yeah, I don't but... know about the other one. You should send you should send me the other one because I I don't know about pure darks, but I do know Luke FZs. Yes, that yeah, one Luke, specifically Luke, I've used yeah. and had much better luck with. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, pure darks also good. He has it's it's a little different. Um, it is, some of them work on Steam Deck, some of them don't, and some of them you can actually use kind of in conjunction, which is weird. But um, I've had good luck with both uh, both the developers mods, uh, and it's really cool to see some things like GTA Five with FSR three. Um, <laughs> it's just it, like the the community always astounds me at how how much they can pull right. off. But yeah, I think that I would guess because it's like you can mod it so easily. Uh, I would guess that Valve is working on something for uh, for that mm-hmm. in the future. Uh, with like in the driver itself so i would i would really like to see that but um yeah if if they can get fsr3 working on the steam deck like that would be really low-hanging fruit for a media performance Mm -hmm. boost um that's actually something something you just mentioned i kind of want to test like i know a couple of games like infinite wealth that does have frame generation that you that i think is grayed out when you're playing on the steam deck but what about like the 3.6 beta which updates the mesa driver what if that enables yeah. it? You know, I I didn't think about trying that, so I kind of want to to do that now. Yeah, I don't know that that three point six like the driver I think is still pretty old in that, but it would be dated wow. after FSR three came out, so it's possible or the the frame gen. Um, so it's possible that it does. I wouldn't mm-hmm. expect it to be wholly OS integrated until like three point seven though, uh, just okay. because the Valve is working on so much stuff all the time. Yeah, it's just it's insane how many things they're contributing, especially to Linux as a whole. Like, I mm-hmm. mean, GameScope itself is just an insanely ambitious project, and yeah, I mean, just... the entire the entirety of what they're doing, like Proton, SteamOS yeah. itself, GameScope, just I think they are single handedly making Linux a gaming operating system now. Yeah, which like, I'm insanely glad for, especially with all the new yeah. Microsoft uh, recall and everything that they're Are adding. you excited <laughs> for Copilot or what? I'm so excited to have my screen screenshot every three seconds. <laughs> Just, I can't believe, I can't, I don't know how they thought that would be a good idea. Like, what is it that convinced them that like, you know what people would love? They would love us to watch and monitor their stuff all the time. Like what? What if? What if there's someone is able to figure out the algorithm and and hack into it, and then they basically are able to see everything that goes on on the computer. This I, is an entire episode of off topic for me. We should yeah, probably not fair. get on this. <laughs> I will. I will rant for an hour. <laughs> uh, fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, then we'll 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 table that because that's something I would love to talk about more in general, just because it is scary. Yeah. Um. But no, Hell, Hellblade 2, hopefully uh, we see some patches for it because it is, like I said, it is playable. Like, will you really enjoy it on the Steam Deck? Probably not. But if you only have a Steam Deck to play it, are you going to be able to? Yes. It's just expect some drops here and there. Um, full review for that one is coming as well. But um, in the end, it is playable. Um, the other game I want to touch on, which I can't say too much of just yet, but I can like talk about it since I, you know, I'm allowed to, is the Rogue Prince of Persia, which comes out in two days on the 27th on when this podcast drops, and it is great to play on the Steam Deck. It isn't 60 frames per second yet, I will say that, but it is above 30, and it still feels very smooth. And it feels great with the controls and just overall, it's like a perfect fit for the Steam Deck. And I'm super excited to see, um, I'm super excited to see how Evil Empire, the developers are going to take it through early access. Yeah. You know, I I would love to play another Prince of Persia. I don't, I I played a few here and there since, uh, Mm -hmm. but my, my favorite will always be Sands of Time. I'm like. That's, that's that's the the pinnacle of the series to me but it's it's nice to see the ip getting some love again after it was kind of deserted for a little while there yeah. so I, I would like to see the it, it, a return to form and uh i rogue prince of persia looks like a very good game so i'm i'm hoping that that gives ubisoft the the impetus yeah. to go and like resurrect the series no it is it's really it's really good so far like i'm really enjoying it the one plus, one other plus point I do want to give it because you know, I don't see it 
happening that often is they don't have Ubisoft Connect DRM and you are not going to be required to connect to a Ubisoft account after it launches into 1.0. It'll be optional, but but you are not going to be required to play the game, which I think Evil Empire actually had to fight tooth and nail for. So kudos to them. That's It's incredible to hear. I'm that's, so happy. That's very good. I mean, especially after the Helldivers 2 saga. Like, I, I okay. love Helldivers 2. I haven't gotten to play it that much, um, as much as I would yeah. like. But after the whole Sony linking saga and everything, and like, no. I, I really hope that's a wake up call to the industry that we don't want a billion accounts and like geographic limitations because of some account that's not even necessary is another thing entirely. Mm-hmm. It's just, yeah, I, I hope that we, we finally start spinning away from that. And um, like, it's, I, I'm really happy to hear that they, they fought back on that for the consumer yeah. because it's just it's not there's no reason we should have to do that i completely agree like the one thing i, I will give sony a little bit of credit for is i understand as they're like moving playstation over to being on pc as well they do want to have all of their users kind of in one area so like yeah. using the playstation network and i can understand that but it's just but for for I guess for multi multi platform developers, it just feels weird. Yeah. And especially if you're doing it late. So like, you know, that's basically what Sony did with Helldivers two. And while they planned to have it in, in the beginning, you know, technical issues stopped them from doing it. Yeah. So, and they didn't make it very clear. I, I would say exactly, it wasn't yeah. clear yeah. enough. I didn't where... actually know at all. Like, I mean, I yeah, I do a lot of research into things, and it was like hidden in a footnote of a footnote. I had no idea, and no, it was yeah, very, it was very hard to see. And like, I I like Sony games. I have a PS5. Like, I enjoy mm-hmm. Sony a lot more, or PlayStation more than Xbox and everything. But like, yeah. I do not want a Sony account affiliated with anything more than it needs to be. The Sony mm-hmm. is about the least secure digital company I know. Like they've I been hacked so many. more times in the past decade than I've had jobs. And that's, there's a decent amount of those. So, like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty scary with how, uh, how uh, shoddy their security is. So I do not want to attach everything to that account. I will attach exactly what I need to and nothing more. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's completely valid. I'm shocked that, they haven't upgraded it further to, you know, based on how many attacks that they get, like, how is it still like, is it just because they're a prime target? So more people try, which means, you know, maybe they do have decent security, but just more people try because they're a high, like, I guess, high tiered yeah, target. I don't know. I, I've like, read the, the, like the breaches and everything. They're not particularly complex or anything. It's just, no. yeah, no, it's just, it, they're just not up to stuff on their security. And like, there's like fine like whatever work on it but don't force people to use the accounts if you don't have it up to up to par no that's all it's it's a little bit ridiculous um but rogue prince of persia come it's going to be coming out on may 27th which if you're watching on youtube or you know not on patreon that's today uh if you're watching it on patreon it's in a couple days uh but i do recommend it a lot of fun feels like the prince of persia game that i've always wanted um no not not saying like the 3d prince of persias were bad but this one feels more like a classic prince of persia game because it's all 2d and it just fits so well into roguelike you know they did and you know evil empire did like the dead cells dlc so they have a lot of experience with this type of game so no very much looking forward to it um or looking forward to seeing what people say of it. I'm playing it right now. So Uh, (laughs) the last thing I want to touch on actually is uh, we had the chance to ask a couple questions to um, the developer evening star, which made the game Penny's big breakaway, which is a 3d platformer made by the the studio that formed uh, that after they made a Sonic mania, which is by far one of the best Sonic games to release in modern times. So they made their own like 3D platformer, which feels a little bit more like um, like a faster version of Super Mario Odyssey, okay. you know, because there's you can do more tricks and there are there are multiple ways to to get from one place to the other using like, you know, aerial tricks. So you can 
throw a yo-yo out and you can swing on it. So you go back and forth and swing. Um, you can dash in the air. You know, there's there's a lot that you can do to progress through the level and you can find like little tricks here and there to cut corners and like, you know, take seconds off your time. I love that kind of stuff. So a uh, really great game. And we had the chance to ask them a couple of questions about how they optimize the game. And when I say optimize, it, this is a fully 3D game that, yeah, it's not super detailed, but it is insane how well it runs at these frame rates. For a fully 3D game to run at 90 frames per second and stay usually below 10 watts of battery drain, that's that's insane to me. And like 60 frames per second is even lower, you know? So it's just nuts seeing a game that is fully 3D, 3D being able to run extremely well, you know, on a, on a portable platform. So we asked them, so we asked them a couple of questions about how they did it. And they, they did actually get more specific, which I was very happy about. Um, the person who responded to our question was Hunter Bridges, who's the game director. Um, and basically, we asked four four distinct questions. Uh, first was about how well it runs. So we asked about like the techniques they use to optimize, and and he responded, and he used like a combination of asset logging, like you know how many triangles in the scene, how many game objects, to make sure it's like a solid amount, uh, CPU profiling and GPU profiling. And they since they were launching across PC, Steam Deck, and consoles. You know, they spend a lot of time to find like the hot spots to profile them and address those bottlenecks very specifically, um, which made me very happy to see because he included Steam Deck in those three categories. And yeah, he did confirm that they had a couple of Steam Deck. So there was multiple Steam Decks that they were testing the game on throughout development, which is probably why it, you know, runs so well. Yeah. Um, I asked also about any like changes that they made to accommodate for the steam deck you know because there's a ton of work that was put in just to get it running well across all the platforms and they mentioned that or he mentioned that uh they found like frame hitches so they had to change how they were handling v-sync and frame rate regulation because it behaves weirder with proton so they had to go into the frame rate regulation code and change it up to make it work properly on the Steam Deck, which, again, just being taking those kinds of steps just for the Steam Deck, like they didn't need to do that, but I think it paid off in leaks just because of how well it runs and how stable it is. And then the final, the final question I asked was about like if they had to make any sacrifices to get it so well optimized, and uh, he responded that like the biggest challenge they had was actually towards the end of development with the quality and quantity of visual effects that they were using. So they actually had to redesign a lot of them to get them running well. So he mentions too, he mentions shock emitters and the firewalls specifically, which firewalls completely make sense. That's that I could see that being a pretty big, uh, a pretty big performance thing. So, you know, Again, it was. I'm really glad I got the opportunity to ask those questions. And if you haven't checked out the game and you like like 3D platformers, like a Hat in Time and um, you know Super Mario Odyssey, definitely check out Penny's Big Breakaway. It's fantastic, and you can check out our review, which I'll have linked in the description below. Yeah, it's been on my wish list for a while now, uh, especially because of the developers. Like they did make Sonic Mania, yeah. and yeah. it shows how much they love gaming with uh, all the effort they put into testing it, and yeah, even recreating assets and stuff. Instead of just slapping like, "Oh, this runs at sixty FPS now," on on it, they actually took mm -hmm. the time to optimize it because they really love the product they are putting out. And you can feel that. And like, I think that that's something that's missing in the games industry at, at large right now. Uh, a lot of mm -hmm. indie studios are that way, which is very nice. But it's just like the, the industry as a whole has moved away from that and turned it into more of a product than a, a work of art. And I think yeah. that they uh, like just the love and care they put into it is going to speak volumes. And like, I'm going to buy it because of that. Like I might like I I like 3D platformers. They're not my favorite, but the fact mm -hmm. that they put so much work into it means that I'm gonna buy it just to experience it. 
I think it's an experience worth having too. It's just a lot of fun, you know, to play. And yeah, I, it, you might not find it as much fun because it's you don't like that kind of game in general. Yeah. But there, there's a lot of beauty to the simplicity of it. And I just, and I do love, you know, I was expecting like knowing their background, I was expecting more of a Sonic esque platformer. But I'm really yeah. glad they went to more of a Super Mario Odyssey where it's more about the technicality of how you combine what you can do in the game versus just getting from one point to the other as fast as possible. Yeah. So I'm glad they went like the super Mario odyssey route. And I think it, it just speaks leagues like, you know, the technicality of what you can do in the game. Like I, I found like these shortcuts that I was able to take, like I skipped like entire large segments of the game just because I combined dashing and flinging myself along with like being able to shoot myself up when I like, force myself to like drop down to the ground as fast as possible and ride my yo-yo to gain speed you know it's like it's like when mario odyssey you turn into a ball and you just keep rolling and you go off a ramp and then you throw your hat and like jump onto it you know it's that same kind of thing but instead i'm on a yo-yo go off it i then take the i then throw the yo-yo out and i swing on it and it uses the force like how fast i'm going to shoot myself up so I do that, and then as soon as I start to lose steam, I do a dash at the end, and I there, you can skip large segments because of that. It's just it's just so cool, That's you awesome. know yeah. what you can do, and I love the, those kinds of games. So I'm really glad they went that direction, and honestly, it's just a wonder how well it runs on the Steam Deck. So definitely an essential to the library, I would say. Love to see it. <laughs> it's okay i, I do as well um i think i think that's gonna wrap up wrap up our topics for for this episode though um is there any anything else you wanted to add before we sign off uh, i don't think so i think we touched on everything we did touch on everything so uh thank you guys so much for watching and we hope you we hope you enjoyed the episode um if you are watching on youtube uh, or Spotify, Amazon Music, or Apple Podcasts, please follow or subscribe or like the video. Uh, or if you haven't yet, go ahead and rate our podcast on any of those. You know, We like five stars, but on these, on, be honest, leave comments. We do read them, we do look for them, and we do want to improve. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching or listening. Yeah, thank you all for... Uh being here and uh you can shut up noah because i have three seconds of latency because you're on the other side of the world uh, <laughs> it's true I am. um so yeah thank you all for uh being here and uh yeah give us any honest feedback and uh yeah i guess uh we'll see you next time we'll see you guys in next week all right. bye